Well, joining me via Skype from Lagos is public affairs analyst and MD CEO Prewin Adekunle Adedeji. Good morning and thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I wonder how concerning uh, this uh, issue of, uh, you know, escaping from isolation centers is to you. We have seen cases, as it is reported in uh, the report that you just uh, watched, uh, talking about uh, in Oshun State, Kaduna, and some other state. Uh, how much of a concern is this? All right, thank you. Um, first of all, I think it's a big concern that um, all of us as individuals need to uh, be worried about. Um, especially with reports that we're getting into an era where the community spread of the coronavirus is going to be uh, on the eyesight, going by the numbers and data that we've seen everywhere around the world. Um, we can excuse the fact that this is a very novel um, 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 situation that we have on our hands, but I think that it's back on us now to begin to put in structure and proper um, um, arrangement into how these isolation centers are built, number one, or constructed, or, or the way we, we, we have the formation. I'll give you an example. Um, it, it's good enough to have people in a room. It's good enough to have security in, in those places. But it's also important how we onboard or how we bring in those people. So there should be data in terms of who, who is coming in at what point in time, how are they logging in, and how are they going out. Um, so if we begin to have cases and news like this, it worries to know uh, what kind of structure, what kind of processes are in this place. And um, of everything that we're already going through, the last thing we want to have is us not able to know or not able to tell um, if those of us who are on this side are safe by the, by, by, by the, um, by, by the, um, by the number of people that are coming in that we're not able to, to count and account for um, in, in the course of these isolation bridges that we have going on on and around. About what do you think could be at the heart of this? Uh, because uh, some reports uh, talk about perhaps the condition or that's the same that, uh, of uh, the isolation center. And uh, some are saying that perhaps the people do not really understand how severe the, the situation is uh, such that um, they might feel uneasy and want to, you know, you know, escape from this isolation center. So what do you think could really be at the heart of this? So, so first of all, I think there are two issues to this. Number one is the preparation of the people in question. You would remember I mentioned that I will go on board the process. So when you're coming in, these people should be seen as heroes. They should be told they are saving lives by, by sacrificing to be there for a period of two weeks or three weeks or as many times or uh, as many days that they need to stay for the period of quarantine or, 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 or isolation period. Now, when they understand this process and they understand how much important it is for them to stay, and receive the treatment, not just saving themselves, but saving the entire people, as it were. It beckoned on them to sacrifice um, on their part and make sure that they stay there. The second, the second point is the, the place of hygiene or the place of conduciveness of that particular environment. I'll be honest with you, I think as of now, little is what can be done. Um, but preparing the people's mind may go a long way. The third one is actually um, the, the actual work, which I think is the next phase for us. The perimeter fencing of those isolation centers needs to be taken uh, more seriously. Um, electronic um, way of security has to come in in terms of whether you need to log in when you are coming in through biometrics or some sort. The, the point is that we cannot allow cases that we have, because you're going to have more of that in other states as they begin to um, have more people come in. Um, um, so the issue of um, conduciveness, the issue of... Um, accountability, the issue of people knowing why they have been brought into this environment or into these isolation centers, I think is very important. So uh, how about uh, certain locations where the government is trying to expand isolation centers as cases increase and there are certain structures that uh, do not have all of these things that you have mentioned. Uh, how does the government begin to you know, put that in place at this point? No, so in the first instance, you would realize that most of the centers that we have now were not there before. So it was, it was, um, it was an emergency arrangement. Mm -hmm. So they, they've got to creatively or constructively create a place to then have people to isolate. And as we expect more numbers to come, I think that it is very important 
as part of the process. Otherwise, when you get people from their house or from their homes and bring them into an isolation center where they don't feel comfortable, uh, quotes and unquote, you're going to continue to have cases like this. So as we plan to expand um, the centers that we have, I think it's also very important that we put into place, we, we, we begin to correct some of the issues or so, some of the problems that we are now finding or we've we realized to be occurring in different states and in different isolation centers. All right, uh, Adekunle Akindeji, thank you for speaking with us. All right, uh, joining me via Skype from Lagos is a public affairs analyst and MD CEO, Priwin Adekunle Akindeji. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. If we had to have an ideal uh, security situation around isolation, isolation centers, what will it be for you? Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me once again. I think the place to start from is to try to look at the architecture that we currently have, uh, knowing that each of those centers are in themselves very unique. Um, so there are places where we may need to have combination of both physical and electronic uh, mining of, of, of the isolation center. Um, you would recall an incident where a particular airline had one of its uh, pilots travel to bring in some people into the country. And as soon as he got in here, he was told, he, he told the, 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 the NCD staff that he wasn't going to present himself for, uh, for quarantine. And um, he, he had to go back into the community before he was eventually brought in. Um, so going by what I've explained the other time is to understand that the current infrastructure we'll have, we'll have to start from how people coming into the, um, into the isolation center, um, what information were given to them, how were they onboarded, um, and then trying to then narrow it down to who and who have engagement or have access into these buildings. So if we have security men who are manning the center, can we also have electronic um, kind of access wherein people are only able to go out by authorized, um, by authorized details? That way to reduce the number of cases that we, that, that we have or the cases that may want to bring up in the, in the nearest future. Uh, but there are some complaints or rather concerns uh, with regards to security operatives in terms of uh, they have complained that uh, they don't have enough equipment. And then there is also the concern that we do not have the capacity to have them on the streets and on the, in isolation centers as well. How is this complicating all of uh, these issues now? So it, it's all the same. So you, you can't secure... Um, an isolation center, if as a security person, you're not secured yourself. Uh, and I'm just hoping that all the figures and all the money that we hear that has been raised by government and by private bodies are properly, uh, properly, properly used. Um, you, you would, security is an essential part of this process. Uh, whether out the food or the resources that are being used are being brought in by third party that are not even in that isolation center, all of that needs to be manned. Um, so I, I think that for us to move forward, especially with the uh, lifting of ban in some of the states that we, I mean, Lagos, Ogun, and the rest of them, we're likely to find a surge if this is not taken um, into proper consideration. Our security men needs to be um, well kitted for them to be on the road and for them to be able to secure people and uh, bring about peace and other in the state. Also, at the venue, at the oscillation center, more needs to be done. Remember, I mean, like I mentioned, it's a very unique um, situation we have as we have in our hands as it is. Some of these centers were not created for what is being used now. But now that we have this situation at hand, we need to quickly go back to drawing board and begin to find a way to mitigate against these um, incidents that we're having. All right, Adekunle Akindeji, we'll leave the discussion here now. Thank you for speaking with us.